Uh, oh, Ken did misspell harder. I did misspell harder. <laughs> what did I? What did I call him? Hard on. Mm-hmm. Hard, hard in. in. Hard, hard like hard I, in. You know, I was I was so concerned about Porzingis. Oh, that I, <laughs> that I, I misspelled the wrong. Is that even, is that even how you oh, spell Porzingis? Hold on, I'll fix it. Nobody click on that link, huh? But uh, but while we talking about it, man, let's not bury the lead. I think Tuesday when we had our predictions on that particular topic, um, I think we got it all wrong. Hmm. Did did we all say nothing was going to happen? I think no, we said it was, didn't we? I, I know I said I don't think he was going to get traded. Man, I, told I think I said weeks. it was. Well, I told y'all for I told y'all for weeks he getting traded. Run. Say what? I said I told y'all for weeks that he was getting traded, but it's fine. Yeah, I, I figured they were afraid to pull the trigger, but I figured they would. Yeah, well, I didn't think they were going to do it. But um, and Stephen A. came out today and was like, oh, yeah, they're not going to do it because they were expecting, well, Harden told them no, and then mm-hmm. the mask mandate. Well, see, that's what, that's what see, I'd already, I heard probably from Q that Harden was already leaning that way and had already been saying he wanted to be traded. So if mm-hmm. that was the case, you know he's not going to resign next year. You need to get something for it now. So yeah. that's why I figured it would happen. You know, you know you're not going to get nothing else for Ben Simmons. You better trade high while you can. But that's why I figured it would. I, I I figured that both teams are in position to make a push, and this was the right play. Mm-hmm. Well, the person that broke the news and been saying it for the longest uh, is is on the show. Um, I think right after. That show aired, he came through and, and dropped some gems on us and uh, was basically kind of hinting that it was a done deal. And uh, and here we are. So, Q, um, we didn't get a chance to talk to you Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So just give us your reaction, your thoughts on the trade. Uh, I think that both sides, of the, both sides of the coin, man, on the Brooklyn side, I think that they came out really well. I think that um, they got a nice backup big and drumming. I think that he's going to play high playoff minutes for them because uh, they need a big. Uh, they needed some size. I like Seth Curry for them as a pickup. And I like Ben Simmons as being like the Draymond to this equation. Uh, KD basically gets a super size Draymond now where you have a fantastic um, defender, perimeter defender, guy could shut down or at least bother to a high degree another team's best player. Somebody that you could at least put on Giannis to try to stifle him. KD can conserve his energy to score. If Kyrie and the mask uh, and vaccine mandate all fall in line, they have a nice little big three. Really a big 2.5 in my opinion because Ben still can't shoot the ball uh, as far as we've seen. If he magically comes into Brooklyn and starts killing, then you know, good for Brooklyn. Uh, I think that came out really well. I think Philadelphia, this is the culmination of – Daryl Morey's patience and uh, a culmination of, I think, just his acumen with knowing the market, knowing his relationships and playing close to the vest with the knowledge from his sources. Because that's all what GMing is is at this point in time is that's why these guys get hired alongside a few other, you know, very obvious um, attributes that some GMs just don't have. And the, th- the reason why Daryl Morey will keep a job in this league is because he has good relationships with a lot of other GMs. Obviously, there's a few who don't like him, but he's good with agents. He knows how to, you know, uh, store second round picks and find second round talent. And he knows how to get superstars. He knows how to, you know, play close to the vest and make sure that when he dispenses of an asset, dispenses, you know, a trade chip that he's getting back something of value that's either for a big move or something down the line. So the fact that he turned uh, Josh Richardson (laughs) into Seth Curry is insane. The fact that he turned Al Horford's terrible contract into Danny Green is, you know, really unsung for him to be able to make this move now for Harden. And I'm pretty sure in in the summertime, there'll be a big move with Tobias Harris. So (laughs) I like the trade for both sides. I'm not, you know, one of those Philly fans who's like, oh, we just fleeced the Nets and, oh, it's over. We go into the finals. But I think that what we've we've just seen is a fantastic uh, duo. If Harden is healthy, if everything falls into place, this will be the hardest pick and roll uh, tandem that we've seen in quite some time because you can't really defend Joel Embiid already. And if James Harden is hitting that three-pointer, if he gets a little bit of that herky-jerk back, gets plays himself back into shape, 
I think we could be looking at the Nets and the Sixers in the Eastern Conference Finals or, you know, uh, the Bucks in the Nets in the Eastern Conference Finals. It just depends on how the trade falls. What do you think, Shelton? For, you know, I for, for a long time, I thought it was going to be a straight-up trade with, with the two of those players. Um, I didn't know the logistics and the numbers of how it was going to work. Straight up, I thought it was a good fit. I kind of, for the Sixers, uh, I kind of felt like the Nets got the better. And the only reason I say that is Seth Curry is valuable to me. That's a valuable mm-hmm. piece. And I hate seeing him go. His shooting meant a lot and the fact that he was consistent. Also, Drummond as a big and a rebounder to, for insurance for MB. When MB, MB needs breaks, he plays well. I, I just hated losing those two pieces. Those were major, major pieces. And getting Millsap back at this point in his career is not as good of a piece. But overall, in the grand scheme of things, I agree with you. I think it's a good move. I like the move a lot for the Nets because you, with James Harden, if he's, the question is going to be if he can stay healthy mm-hmm. because he ain't proved that he can do that quite yet, especially during playoff times. He, he disappears in the playoffs too. So what are we going to get when, when, the game is on the line. Is he finally going to get over the hump this time or what? what's going to happen with that? Um, that's just the, on, the only other thing that scares me. And you got those same concerns with Ben, of course, mm-hmm. and his shooting or whatever, but you bring over a player like Seth with that. They needed what they needed in, in New Jersey was consistency one. Um, so hopefully the, the guys that they have will get to play and we get to see a real team. And two, you needed depth. And that's something that they didn't have. Now they have both. You know, you added some valuable pieces to that that team. And for the Nets, to me, it looks great. It looks really good for the Sixers, and it can be great. Just depends on Harden and what we're going to get. Why did they have to throw in the two first-round picks? I, that, that's the I'm part that kind of confused the, me. The um, reason why they had to throw yeah. in the two first-round picks uh, was because the sticking point was Thibault for a minute, from what I understand, from what people were telling me. Uh, Thibault was in the deal until Daryl Morey was like, all right, y'all asking for too much. Um, so how about this? We'll give you an unprotected first round because we're already going to be a contender. So that's going to be in the late 20s. So that's fine. And then you get a 2027 uh, top eight protected, which is five years from now. So they retained their second rounders and their first rounders in 23, 24 and 26. So it was either Thibault now, which is, which would have just beefed up their defense even more. Or, all right, I'll give you Curry, Drummond, and then, you know, just take these two picks. That's basically going to be, eh. You're probably going to use them. If you're Brooklyn, you're probably going to use those two picks to try to do something with contracts either this summer or next summer. So, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that they kept Matsy. Same, same. Yeah, I I thought that was good. And, um, yeah, mentioning that Thabu was on the table, I think, you know, just seeing him out on the court, with his defense, his ability to get steals and stuff like that, um, definitely worked out for them. You know, I think, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I like it for for both sides. I think uh, we talked about that Tuesday that um, it felt like it was going to be pretty much an even deal. I think both parties get something that they're lacking. Uh, ben Simmons miraculously will um, get over his mental health issues. I, I'm sure, um, and. Uh, and I think for Harden, man, like I, I, it's gonna be great seeing him and him and Embiid play. But this is back to back years, bro. And and I know he's picking up his option, but I'm trying to really figure out, like, what was the issue that he had in Brooklyn after forcing his trade there. Just a year ago, man, you 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 got me coming in hot already, Ken. Yeah, I do. I Golly, do. I just pulled Welcome up to the what, party. What is, <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Did I not tell you and all of the people watching, including Q? Maybe he watched <laughs> it on the replay. It's Kyrie. It's Kyrie, man. Did you not see the thing I sent y'all? Yeah, where 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 Kyrie mm-hmm. was ready for James to go. Mm-hmm. It, it, it it was mutual, bro. Look, when you are a, a superstar at the level that those three are. Right, Kyrie, KD, James Harden. If there is any type of real friction, and what I mean by real, there's a reason, right? Because there's going to be friction to a degree because you're great, I'm great. Maybe you shouldn't have took that shot. Like, I'm James Harden. I understand you're KD. Everybody knows who, but I'm James Harden, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's always going to be a friction. There's only one ball. 
but it's a workable friction. When Kyrie said, I'm not getting vaxxed, right? Okay, cool. The, the organization said, we're not doing no part-time shit. Kyrie's still a part of the team. He just won't be playing. What happened? The team reneged on that. Mm -hmm. The only reason why that was even instilled by the team was because the players had to agree on that. Mm. When I say team, I mean James Harden and KD. If they were cool with Kyrie not playing because he didn't want to get vexed, and they were also cool with, you know what I'm saying, with, with everything else, the team, ha the organization has to go out there and, and perpetuate that, 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 that whole thing. The moment that they reneged on that, one of them two, and, I, and I'm going to tell you exactly who it was, the motherfucker that got traded. James Harden, because James Harden didn't choose Brooklyn. KD chose Brooklyn with Kyrie, so he knows whatever the hell Kyrie do, I got to deal with it. I chose that. I could have went anywhere else, and I chose Kyrie. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose the Brooklyn Nets. I didn't choose the Bulls. I, didn't cho I chose Kyrie Irving to attach my wagon to, mm -hmm. to be a great team. Me and him. Regardless of who you would trade for, this, that, and the third, me and him in Brooklyn, because they could afford the both of us. Bob, they did what they had to do, and they went and got James Harden. James Harden was the odd man. James Harden had to make the most sacrifice. Kyrie came to James and said, hey, bro, I need you to be the point guard, because I want to get buckets. When James Harden, for how many years, led the league in scoring, if not top two, 50-point triple doubles? So how long before you upset with, with Embiid or Doc Rivers? He not, he, look, look. Number one, he has his favorite GM in the front office. So the GM is going to make sure that whatever James Harden needs, he's going to have. Right? Mm -hmm. We saw that in Houston. First of all, he made the trade for James Harden. That, it was Daryl Morey that said, hey, this is a superstar. Y'all may not know, but I know. Mm -hmm. And then after that, how many times did he retool around that guy? Well, see, that, but the difference here is he's not worried about fitting around James Harden. This is Embiid's team. Oh, 100%. So but 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 let let let's be honest, right? Like, when James is playing at his optimum performance, is he not on the same plateau as Embiid? No, I I disagree. Not anymore. He I don't think he'll ever get back to that plateau. I think he he'll always be. He'll never get where Embiid is now. Again, he was there, but he won't be there again. No, I I, I don't know about that. I, don't, I I I can't I can't I can't just make that type of statement because. When 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 he was in Houston, he was extremely motivated until he wasn't. Right. And Brooklyn, it didn't feel like he was motivated. So like he was there. I'm doing my job. But this is KD and Kyrie's team. Right. Like like it it, it, James Harden, whenever there's a trio, there's one guy that got to sacrifice the most. Right. The only time we didn't see that was in Golden State. But mm. that's a little different because the system, it just it, it works like that. Right. So that's 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 the point one percent. So let's mm -hmm. move that away. Everywhere else where there is a big three, one person has to take has to make a sacrifice. This in this case in Brooklyn, it was James Hardy. Mm -hmm. And he was OK because he, he has point guard. So ability. why is Kyrie happy then? Because James Harden is the one making the stink about him not playing. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. So what's been going on as per my sources and sources around the league, apparently, from whether it be Windhorse, Woes, or whatnot, is that around, I think it was around like probably two, three weeks ago when Harden had like a slight re aggravation with uh, his hamstring, uh, there was like a little bit of an altercation. Not like, uh, let me reframe that. I hate when say say that word. There was a conversation between Kyrie and uh, James that led to James being like, you know what? Heard you. You just you not gonna do this. I'm gonna have to carry the team while KD's out. James Harden was the MVP candidate last year, and he mm -hmm. thought that everything was cool because all right, I'm willing to die for for the cause as long as everybody else is willing to die for the cause. The minute Kyrie decided not to take that shot, he saw that as like, oh, okay, so KD gonna be hurt. I'm gonna have to overexert myself here, even though we all thought that this was gonna be a three headed dragon. I'm not about to do this. This is about to be one person trying to keep this team afloat when I could just go to a different team and then share the workload with somebody who's really here. James Harden may not be a notoriously quote unquote, a hard worker by some people's standards, but the dude works on his game. The dude cares about basketball. 
He just doesn't like it when teams don't fulfill their end of the bargain. And he looked at it like Kyrie was not fulfilling his end of the bargain. Hmm. Well, how you think Ben Simmons going to work out? You think he's going to get on the court? Hell yeah, he's going to get on the court, man. That man. Look. KD already said he hollered at him. Come, come on. Look, look, look. look. Th- th- this whole notion. Okay. Ben Simmons used a technicality, and I understand that I can get backlash about what I'm about to say, but it is what it is, how I feel. I'm not going to be apologetic about how I feel outside looking in. Ben Simmons used a technicality to force his way out. Mm -hmm. Now, was he, you know, did he struggle mentally? Of course. The way he went out in the playoffs last year would, would be a lot of weight to carry for any player that goes through that, right? Like, Nick Anderson had to go through that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you fuck up and sometimes you're not the same guy anymore. Now, with that being said, in my opinion, Ben Simmons is young enough and also his game is made to be a distributor. He was never the, the an elite scorer. Can he get 20 points? Yeah, because you 6'10 and you move like a 5'2 guy. Like, of course. You, 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 you could walk into 20. Mm-hmm. So for me... Um, Ben Simmons has been ready to play mm. for a couple reasons. You want to shed the stigma. You, you look, he's an alpha male. Who? Ben. You know why? Oh. I, 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 I already know yeah, how. So, that, that's, why, that's why I looked at you. That's why I looked at you. Mm-hmm. Because I know how you feel about this situation. But the reason why I say that is look at early Ben when Joel and B finally got healthy from his rookie season. Right. And I remember sharing th- this article with um, Ken because Ken was still like, I don't know about Joel. And when Joel finally got healthy, Joel came out and said, I feel like I'm the best player on the court when I'm healthy. Right. And this was before he played an NBA game. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons took issue with that then. That's not trace of an alpha male. Though. That is trace of, uh, of nah, an alpha male because Ken- that's a, that's an alpha male in the back of your brain. But it does not exhibit alpha male traits An alpha male. Don't have to say that. I ain't worried about what you're talking about. I'm gonna prove that I'm the I'm the one. And if he's talk, if you get offended I, I when somebody say that, that's not an alpha. Male I, I disagree because Kobe and Shaq had their had their tip. There, there, there's many a time when there's alpha males that feel threatened that they're going to say something and they're going to prove it with action. There Your you go. Issue, no, no, I know. No, there I already, you go. Look, 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 it's look, both. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Shelton, I already know how you feel, which is mm-hmm. why I, I'm saying what I'm saying. Ben Simmons is going to show it with action. No, Alpha Male, and, and I'm not saying that, that that he won't finally have the get to the place that he wants to. But like I said, I've been following Ben Simmons for a long time, and I've been waiting on him to show this Alpha Male men- mentality. He didn't have it at LSU. He had all the talent in the world, but that's not Alpha Male traits. That's not leadership. That's not what you look at. Him not taking that shot. That's just a microcosm of it. Mm-hmm. But that's proof right there. An Alpha Male. Ain't not only are they taking that shot, they'll take that shot with five people on them. They want they want that ball. Kobe gonna take that. Kobe would never not you, take you, that you, shot. You, you, you know one thing that Kobe said that you know after I digested it and especially who the audience was that he said it to, I was like, you know, there, there's 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 different levels of basketball players. Remember when Darren Williams was going through a slump and Kobe was like, I don't give a damn. I go over fifty. Like, I'm gonna still shoot that. Correct. Thing. And Darren Williams is like, I'm a point guard. <laughs> I can't, I, I, I can't do like everybody's position on the court requires a different type of mentality. Right. Right. Now I under def- I definitely understand having an alpha male mentality that um that you see where it comes in a form of leadership that I'm going to take over. Correct. Right? And it's, it's I was gonna say it's leadership more so than anything else. Ben doesn't have that. That's why he's sitting out. That's the whole reason he feels like he feels in Philly. He 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 is. He's very, tall. He he, and I agree. And he's immature. He's immature. So you can't be an alpha male and be that. Well, you There's know what I think. Days. I think you know what though. I think in the middle of what y'all are saying is, I think what FIFO not trying to speak for you, but I think what FIFO is trying to get across is that Ben perceives himself as an alpha male, or he he perceives himself as being a prideful uh, person and somebody who has to be respected for the work he puts in on what he does well. And when people don't respect that about him, the fact that he'll whatever, work on his passing, stay in the weight room, he doesn't really ever really have a lot of injuries. He had that one season and then like the bubble season, but that was it. 
and he's always willing to compete on defense. Cool. He sees that as like, look, this is what I do well. I'm not about to change my game for this dude. Y'all should be, and by this dude, I mean Joel and B. They've never been the best of friends. Let's just go ahead and reiterate mm-hmm. that. They, 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 they were never the. Oh, me and Joel are going to get steaks at Geno's, or we going to Dallas Andros and shit. That was never happening. That was never happening on Broad Street. They would they go Ben the minute the season's over. Ben is out to L.A. You know what I mean? It's, it's, shit. Jo- Joel would literally be running the streets of Philly with his team. He would go mm. go go to he would go to parks in Fishtown to like dunk on white kids and you know Lower Marion and shit. It was crazy. So for him to, you know, be like the city son versus Ben just being like the distant, you know, number two, it always felt like for Ben, I'm not about to change my game for him. Y'all need to put shooters around me. I'm a Giannis type. That's what that's what Clutch and Chris Paul, not Chris Paul, Rich Paul were telling Sixers management is, look, it's either him or, or us. And they chose Embiid as they rightfully should the minute he got healthy. But he may perceive himself as an alpha. He may perceive himself as a prideful person that needs to be respected. But in Brooklyn, I think he's going to go through a, a, a transition from being like the guy who everyone saw as like, oh, this is LeBron 2.0 perhaps, to now being like, this is a supercharged version of a Draymond Green. And I don't think that's necessarily terrible for his career because you're attaching yourself to KD. And as long as he just rides with KD, and KD stays healthy, he could be, you know, going down in history as like, oh, he was a great number three or a great glue guy who was able to play defense, lockdown, blah, 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 blah. And then let's see what the, the story writes itself as, you know? But it was always like that. Q, and, and I agree. Like, Ben sees himself as an alpha male. Some of the things that you talked about, Shota, I agree he doesn't have. But you can't tell me that, that 6'10", 240, Whatever vertical and the IQ he has is not alpha male. No, that's talent. It's not the same thing. Let me tell you something. When you can outman a grown ass man that's older than you, stronger than you, more experienced than you, you alpha out there, bro. No, no, that's not the, that's not the you, definition of an alpha man. Like I said, Muggsy Bowes was alpha male because he was a leader of men. He was the smallest thing out there. He didn't have the physical attributes, but wasn't nobody gonna punk him. At no point were you going to punk Muggsy No, Bones, 100%. And he was going to come to play every night, and he was going to make these other men behind him go too. Hey, we finna play. He was always ready. He was always ready to go. No matter who. He guarded Jordan. You, you see the pictures? No, I, I know. This little little kid looked like, he, you know. I, hey, look. That's Mug, alpha male mentality. M- M- Muggsy yeah. showed me that it didn't matter. To be an alpha male, that's here. It, it, it's part have, mentality, yeah. but it's you cannot tell me that alpha doesn't mean physical. No, it's seventy percent. It's seventy percent mentality, thirty percent physical. I don't know about that. So I, yeah, that's I talent. I wonder what percentage. happens when Kyrie have Kyrie have a spell. We all know he's going to be fine with Nash. Nash is a pushover, of course. So he'll be fine there. I don't know KD's temperament, but we know Kyrie can be all over the place. So what happens if they if they don't mesh like Ben Simmons and Kyrie don't mesh? Then what? Well, well here, here's the thing, Ken. I think that, again, I think Ben, for the most part, is going to be on some of his best behavior, at least for the first year and a half, right? Like the half of this year, next year, mm-hmm. right? It's a new situation. Um, but Kyrie is wearing his welcome, and, and he's going to continue to wear his welcome as long as he has the mentality that he has. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Kyrie will be good for a year or two, but then... If you got to make a choice, who are you going to choose? You're going to choose the younger guy. It's just interesting. You uh, you being Ben, go from wanting it to be your team to a team where you're the third guy, to wanting to be that alpha, to now you're just a name on the on the on the marquee. Because it was it was it was Doc as well. Um, I, I need to make it clear that it was. Doc on top of Joel's comment that made it be like, oh, okay. It's almost like it's almost like being at work, right? And you at work and you got these other coworkers and y'all not really cool like that, but y'all stay out of each other's way and y'all can be co- collaborative and you can be communicative, right? And then there's an error that happens on a project. And then, you know, it may not just be only one person's fault, but it's really a lot of one person's fault. Benson's, right? And then Doc has his share of the issue. There's also structural issues within the actual workplace itself. And there's also the other guy who didn't really fulfill his 
end of the bargain too a little bit in Joel Embiid. But then everyone turns on this one guy and says, that's the reason why the project got messed up. Mm-hmm. So Ben Simmons is looking at this like, oh, word. Okay, cool. No, 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 no. Okay, see, nah, see, y'all not about to do all this to me though. But the thing is, though, is Ben lacks the self-awareness to see that, look, dude, there may have been structural issues within the organization that roster construction or things that could have been better to suit what you do well, but you made no inroads on your weaknesses in the offseason because you felt as though that what you did well should be enough. And that's just unacceptable. So I see why he sat out. I'm not, I was never mad at him for sitting out because I knew it was always going to come to this. Ben Simmons was always going to be like this. He was always going to make them say, hey, look, it's either me or him. And people are going to understand that that's about to be the same thing for the Celtics too as well. But um, guys like this, man, you can't, you, 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 you almost have to choose like Penny and Shaq, Shaq and Kobe, you know, KD or Draymond. That's like, that's really not even a question. Really it's KD and Steph. The reason why that broke up because KD mm-hmm. felt like he needed mm-hmm. to have more of the, you know, share of the success. Like, dude, I just jade on LeBron James and y'all giving this light skin stop. So I'm going to go get have my own team. And now it's going to be, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion, it'll be, is, is it Kyrie or will it be Ben? Because I don't think the Nets are going to keep Kyrie in the next two years. There's going to be a move that happens. So this was a move about not just uh, securing an asset because they let go so many for Harden. Because if they just let him walk in the offseason, it would have been a disaster. Yep. Yeah, but, that's what I was thinking. You know, it would have been a disaster because they let Jared Allen become an all-star borderline in Karis LeVert is not like, dude, like, it's isn't it wild how Karis LeVert and Jared Allen both wind up in Cleveland helping that team out? And now James Harden, if you just let him walk, you, you, you recoup no asset. So now it's really about longevity for Brooklyn, where they have picks, Seth Curry, uh, Drummond, they can resign him, and they have Ben Simmons for the next four years now. So it's really about, look, even if we lose Kyrie, we can make a move for a Dame, and we can make a move for a Bradley Beal if, mm-hmm. if, if we need to. So that's kind of what they're seeing now. And I like the trade for both teams. I can't lie. I, I really do. And, and what have I, like, the, the, what was it, Tuesday that we talk a little mm-hmm. bit about this? Right? Like, I, I said it then. And I said it in um the, the D, DS 365. Make the move. Make the move. When, and I'm pretty sure James Harden went to them and said, hey, bro, I'm not signing. He did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that that's what happened. Um, but you got to make the move. You cannot be scared to move forward in the future because a GM's job is to ensure that depending on where you are with your roster, right? Mm-hmm. Like some, some people rebuild, some people are retooling, mm-hmm. some people are contenders, right? If you are retooling or a contender and you have a disgruntled top two player and you know for a fact that you can get somebody that is top five at their position with additional assets, you got to make it, you, mm-hmm. especially if they are an, especially if they are a potential free agent, right? Regardless if they have a player option or not, you have to make the move. It's a simple, if, if, and, and think about this, did Kyrie not assure Boston that I'll be back? Yeah. If you have me, mm-hmm. I can't take none of you motherfuckers that you were. All right. I don't give a damn if James Harden said, no, nah, bro, I'll be back. No, nah, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Like, I, sign I, right here. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I see how you move every day. Mm-hmm. I see that you don't holler at Kyrie. I see that in the locker room, this shit is weird. Mm-hmm. I see. And here's the thing you don't have to be best friends, but shit, you got. We know what a good working environment looks like and feels like. We if, Even if it's your first job, it's a vibe. You know, it, you innately know. And you could look on the court. James Harden wasn't motivated 100% or 100% of the time. He wasn't, especially this season with Kyrie playing part-time. I told y'all that that was a major issue, that they were not going to be able to get over. Why? Because the organization went reneged on their word. Yeah. Mm. That's a problem, man. Yeah. Uh, let's, did you have something else? Uh, I was going to ask y'all too. How long y'all think before Ben is going to get on the court? In a week. But, but but even yep. then he two, two I, weeks. I was seeing him talking about how he has to get back in game shape because he ain't played basketball and even if he's in shape he's not in yeah it's different. basketball shape mm-hmm. how long before he's ready to how old mm-hmm. is he twenty five 
25 hours. 25? Yeah. Two, I say give him, give him, as I said, get him in 14 days. He'll, he'll, he'll be back. He'll be fine. Mm. Yeah. 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 He's not 35. That's, hey, yeah. that's a big difference. Yeah. 25. Ben's been, yeah. Ben's, Ben's been working out. He's been staying in the weight room and he's been staying, like, getting his mobility work done and all that stuff, man, making sure his tissues and everything are together still. So it's really just yeah. James Harden, who I have the question about. Um, will his hamstring magically get better? Will he magically put in the work? You know? <laughs> hey, come on. Q, I address I addressed this on Tuesday as well. I said, yeah. isn't it curious that all of a sudden mm-hmm. James Harden not playing? Yeah, Come no, on. you did bring that yeah. up. Oh, we know yeah, we know mm-hmm. about that. Now, yeah. What's lost James- in this though for me, FIFO, is how Steve Nash was able to avoid criticism during this nine game losing streak. Man, you, you know ain't why heard a peep about that. You know, you know, okay, so first of all, Steve Nash has said all of the right things, right? When it comes to all of the turmoil and everything happening. I, I spoke to James. He, he wants to be here. Not giving the media anything. Mm-hmm. Also, he gets the benefit of the doubt because KD's hurt. KD's hurt. James Harden hurt. And Kyrie played part-time. Yeah. What the hell are you supposed to do when, when two and a half pieces that, 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 that you're relying upon to that make you an elite team are not playing? And you mm-hmm. gave up the whole treasure chest to get the one piece. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen? So... I think if anybody expected anything else with no James Harden, no KD, and Kyrie playing part time to not go through a losing, like what the hell? What, what, what's the realistic expectation? I think it's because your name is not LeBron James and you're not the LA Lakers, uh, and I think that's where that is. Because and nobody really cares. One hundred percent, Ken. That that that's the difference between LeBron mm-hmm. and every other superstar. Before, Correct. except for Mike, because even though he's hurt, they were talking about when LeBron coming back. They'll yep. find something, yeah, you yep. know, or you know, but Late, anyway. Was it? But league. you know what? You know what's even lost in that? To add on to what FIFA saying, the reason why I'm obviously I know the reason why they don't talk about it. Obviously, because of market and other re- re- reasons. Um, Ty Lue can come back from 22 points down without Kawhi Leonard or Paul George with his B team in against the Wizards, he can get, you know, seven games. If they're, if if it's seven games without PG or some of his best players like Marcus Morris, if it's seven games, he'll win three of them. For for Nash to not be able to win one or two of these games, that's troubling to me in, in the playoffs because uh, I've, obviously as we're going to progress the conversation about other trades, other teams made little marginal moves like Milwaukee that, to me, that it's huge. just like that was a huge move, you know. I mean, and we'll definitely talk about that. But to me, I'm worried about Nash because I haven't seen anything beyond like him say, "All right, y'all, KD, Kyrie, go hoop," and that's just literally <laughs> it. That's so, not that's not a strategy. So, Q, to to a little bit of what you said, I agree that you know, uh, really good to elite coaches. I don't give a damn. You give me five dudes from damn Kmart, Walmart. We're gonna win a game. You know, mm-hmm. just be, just be. So, so I'm, I'm not saying that Steve Nash is a bad coach. I'm definitely not saying that he's a good coach. Mm-hmm. But what, what, what I saw in, in, in a lot of these games, energy level, the lack of want to, because they knew internally what was happening. Yeah, this is mm. the, the part of this losing streak. Just is it basketball talent or lack of coaching? This has a lot to do with the situation confusion. that's going on. It's confusion. It, confusion. Yo, it, it, like, is James really going to get traded? Bro, I don't even know. Shit, you think you're going to be part of that trade? <laughs> How much money you make? Right. Shit, nigga, you might be gone you too. You going too? <laughs> bro, like, bro, like, that's, not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bro, think about it. We talk about basketball players as commodities, <laughs> but these are Humans mm, yeah. <laughs> that have baby mamas, wives, girlfriends, kids in school and, school all, and all of that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, just like this, you trade me to a city across the fucking country. And how the hell am I going to handle Like, who's going to handle that? We wasn't ready for that. Mm-hmm. We wasn't ready to be uprooted. We said they're a bunch of Mike McDaniels. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> um, 